This evening we'll look at John chapter 12 verses 20 to 27 as we see Jesus' words, I tell you the truth, if one dies, it gives life to many. We'll talk about seeing Jesus and Jesus being seen. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text today from John chapter 12. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. <coughs> so far, the text. The city was abuzz. Holy Week was here. The people, all of the tourists, had come to Jerusalem. Not really tourists, but pilgrims. The city of 100,000 had blossomed. It was three times the size. There was no room for everyone. They had scattered even to the outlying communities to find lodging, to find a place to lay their head and a place to get some food. When all of a sudden, amidst all the hubbub, a great cheer erupted as Christ, upon a donkey, made his way in a great train down the side of Mount Olivet into the valley Kidron and up the side of Mount Moriah and into the golden gate of the temple in Jerusalem. The people lined the byways. They waved the palm branches celebrating the arrival of a victorious king, the king of kings, the long-awaited Messiah. Many people took off their outer garments and carpeted the roadways as the donkey came by. There was a great deal of excitement in the air. Everyone was talking. Everyone wanted to see this Jesus. Many of them had not seen him, but only had heard. And now that they had come to Judea, were anxious for a glimpse of him. It wasn't only the Jews who were there that would like to see this Jesus. No, it was also the Gentiles. We have an account this evening of some Gentiles who came to the disciples, particularly to Philip, who was also from Bethsaida and Galilee, the Gentile community up on the north end of the Galilee of the Gentiles. And they asked Philip, they gave him a request, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. It was all coming together now. The Christ would call all nations to him and people from everywhere would rally around that cross. Tonight, Jesus responds to Philip and Andrew as they come to Jesus with this request, acknowledging this moment. He says, I tell you the truth. If one dies, it produces life for many. What was Jesus talking about? Why was Jesus changing the discussion now from all of the exciting things that were taking place to gardening? What did Jesus have in mind? Certainly wasn't about planting, wasn't about farming, was it? He was talking about his coming death. Because all that the prophets had foretold were now coming to pass in Jerusalem. He uses the example of a kernel, a kernel of wheat, when planted in the soil. 
The idea that a kernel of wheat, when put in the ground, brings forth a stalk with many kernels on it. Now, I don't know much about wheat, but growing up in Iowa, I know a great deal about corn. You take a piece of corn, and you put it in the ground, and the corn stalk grows, and on that corn stalk is, among other things, a cob that has kernels on it. One kernel of corn produces on a single cob approximately 600 kernels. And then you multiply that by the number of cobs on the stalk of corn. Isn't that remarkable? One little kernel can produce so much. Jesus knew it was time. Time for his death to come. He had lived a life for us that we could not live. He endured suffering and temptation that we could not endure. And now he was willing to give up his life. And here they came, the Gentiles. Sir, we would see Jesus. That's really what it's all about, isn't it, tonight? Seeing Jesus. That we should, through the gift of faith that God's word creates in our heart, see the miracle of the passion. It's all about to happen. It begins this Sunday. And all of the events of that final week will now come into play. We, like they are Gentiles, not a Jewish person among us. And yet, Christ the Lord opens his arms and welcomes Gentiles. He welcomes the people who were not a people of God to become the people of God through the gift of faith. He welcomes you and me into his kingdom. Not because we deserve it. We certainly don't. As we reflect through these Lenten evenings, we're very aware that we don't deserve anything from God. And if, if we were to deserve anything, we wouldn't want what we got. It would mean death and hell, wouldn't it? But God in his mercy and grace has permitted us to see Jesus. And Jesus wants to be seen. Our dear Lord goes to the cross for you and I, not a secret death, not a hidden away, event, but there at the crossroads of Jerusalem and the crossroads of the world for all to see. He will lay down his life for you and me. He will lay down his life, one kernel, so that you and I, who because of sin were slated for death, might now in him who should not die, in his death, Receive the gift of life. Sir, we would see Jesus, and Jesus would see us. As we look at the events now of Palm Sunday unfolding, and hear the familiar hallelujahs and hosannas, and we're reminded once again of all the joy and the festivity of that wonderful day of celebration, the day of palms. We can't help but look ahead just a little bit and know what's coming. But even that Friday is good. How can it be good? It's good because of what the Lord does for us. It's holy because the Holy One of God laid down His holy precious blood his innocent suffering death for you and for me. As we prepare now on this last Lenten evening to look ahead to Palm Sunday and all of the wonderful excitement that will happen this coming weekend, let's stay mindful of the passion. Let's stay mindful of the cross. For there we see Jesus, and there by faith 
Jesus is seen. And then, and then, after three days, he will be seen again. And we will behold him one day soon with our own eyes. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of corn of wheat dies, it remains, oops, I'm sorry, if one dies, it produces life for many. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.